Good morning, Young Neil. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day. Thank you. To all mothers, future mothers, and those who have raised children, we thank you. Will you please stand for our Mother's Day call to worship? And Jesus said, come. To all mothers and children, he said, come. To the motherless and the childish, childless, he said, come. To all who long to be mothered, he said, come. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Please be seated. Our scripture this morning is a Mother's Day scripture, and it comes from Proverbs 31st chapter, and we're going to start at the 27th verse. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, as he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. The word of God for the people of God. And we're feeling that the men should respect the mothers today, so we're going to ask our brother Jordan if he will lead us in a prayer and a song if he will.
know that you're a mighty God and you're able to do all things. Heavenly yeah. yeah, Father, I, I thank you for my help being as well as it is. Yeah. God, I thank you for all the sick and afflicted, oh God, that you're blessing every day. Yeah. God, we thank you for allowing us to see a day to day that we've never seen before. Yeah. You know, God, we never will see it again. Yeah, yeah Lord God, Father, we thank you yeah. for your love, your kindness, and your mercy. Yeah. Oh, Lord God, we ask you, Father, don't let us walk around with our heads hung down and our minds confused because you're too good to us. Oh, God, we thank you, oh God. Lord, we thank you this morning. Heavenly Father, we ask you to touch him and to lay hold those bodies that are broken. Oh, God, you made us. Oh, God, we know that you made us and you, you put us out here on this earth. But Lord, you put us here for a reason, oh God. Somebody, God, we thank you. There's somebody that is less fortunate than what we are. Yeah. Oh, Lord God, if we don't reach any kind of way at all, let us reach down and pick somebody up and yeah. them up and help them to the plant their feet on a solid foundation. Yeah. Now, Lord God, in heaven, when this life battle is over with, yeah. can't come this way no more. All right. Got your holy and everlasting word planted in our hearts. Oh, God, we know on the other side that yeah, Father, that we see, sit at your feet and praise you, God. God bless your preacher this morning. Jesus. Bless his wife. Jesus. God, we ask you, Father, I ask you to bless my wife this morning. Yes, Lord. I just thank you for God. Yes, Lord. Lord, follow Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I know that one day this is going to be over with. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, God, in the meantime, uh -huh. while we're waiting to get there, let us continue to have a hallelujah in the glorious time. Yes, Lord. Every time we just say the name of Jesus, yes. let us glorify. Be glad that we're able to even yes, say it. Yes. Now, Father, amen. Yes, you bless us, Father, yes. and all of us. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're here and we're being safe. We're socially distancing. We're wearing our mask. And if you've had your shots or, or if you feel that God wants you to be in a place to worship, please come and join us. And we're saying to our church members, don't get lazy looking at, at us on YouTube and on your phones. It's so easy to not have your clothes on and have a cup of coffee in your hand and just watch us on TV. But if you come on in, we can manage to get you a cup of coffee. You just can't bring it in the sanctuary. But but come and worship with us. And we ask our members and our friends to please continue to give so that we can continue to do as a church body what God has offered, asked us to do. Bring your tithe to the storehouse. You can come on Saturday, you can call one of the officers, or you could just come in Sunday and drop it off. And at this point, we're going to ask one of our deacons to come forth and offer our offertory prayer. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for allowing us to see this day of day we've seen and day we've never seen before. We thank you for this Mother's Day. We bless all the mothers, Lord. We ask that you strengthen them, whether we can build them up, whether they're torn down. Father God, we send a special blessing down to all those that are given this morning for this offering and those that are not here to participate as well, Father. And we ask that you show them in a mighty way your love for their obedience. These are the blessings we ask in our Son Jesus' name we pray. Mother's Day will be a great day for 
all mothers and mothers mean so much uh, to all of us. Amen. We just thank God for you. We're going to move out the way and uh, let the choir come in just a minute, but we're going to read uh, one of the ca cards. And this is says, for a season, a woman is a mother in her home for all of her life. She's a mother in her heart. To all mothers at Jimmy Hill CPCA, your love for your family and for many others is a blessing that goes on and on. Happy Mother's Day. God bless each of you. Enjoy your special day. And we love you from myself and from our first lady, Cruzy. And we love because he first loved us. First John 4, 19. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. By way of a few announcements, We want to uh, re remind us to keep praying for Sister Sandra Douglas. She had a procedure about a week ago, and last week, as a matter of fact, and uh, she's recovering well at home, and it was successful. And so let's continue to pray for her. Brother uh, Louis Love was in ICU this week at the Hospital Hospital, and he has since been discharged. He's convalescing at home. So let's keep Louis in our prayers. Mother Rosie Moore celebrated a birthday a few days ago, so we wish her a happy birthday. And uh, Brother Spencer Lacey also had a birthday. We wish, wish Spencer a happy birthday. And I was told that Sister Sasha Jones had death in her family. Uh, I did try to contact her, but I didn't get a response, so we're praying for her in her loss as well. And uh, Sister Barbara Ballas, our brother, Sarge, was laid to rest on yesterday. And we thank everybody from Union Hill who came and gave support to that family. So let's continue to pray for all our known sick and shut-in members. And let's keep uh, those, uh, especially the, uh, Mother Marcita uh, Davis' family, her entire family. Well, I won't say the entire family, but immediate family, her daughter. And her grandchildren, all of them are now with COVID-19. And she has had her vaccinations. Uh, and she's the only one that doesn't have COVID-19. But the rest of them in her family, she said she needs prayer because it's difficult trying to take care of more than one person. And she is really having it right now. So she's not able to go to work. She works, but she can't work right now uh, for the duration of the time that she has to be in quarantine. So she does ask us to be praying for her, and definitely we will be praying for her. Amen. Choir will come and bless us at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. two months ago, Pastor said something that kind of stuck with me. He said, uh, what, what we do down here is just a rehearsal. He said, what we do on Sunday morning is just a rehearsal for later. And some of us, when we get up there, we may not know what to do because we, we ain't been in rehearsal. <laughs> but we in rehearsal right now, so when all God's children get together, what a time it will be. Amen? Amen.
great God, greatly to be praised. I thank you, Lord, for all that my eyes have seen, my ears have heard, and my heart has felt. Oh, God, when your children get together, Father God, what time? We thank you for the choir. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for these who have gathered, Lord. We're just glad to be here. We're glad to be here. Now, Father, we pray that you forgive us for our sins of commission and omission. We pray, Lord, that you touch the ones who are not able to be here. Those who could be here, but for some reason or not. We pray, oh God, that you touch them, Lord, and allow them to be thankful to you because every minute might have eternity in it. And we just thank you. Now, Father, we pray that you let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. And you are my strength and my redeemer. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is his name we pray. Amen. 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 I give all to God, who is the head of each of our lives. And I thank God for Jesus, who is the head of the church, and the Holy Spirit, the believer's guide. Happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers that's here and the ones who are out listening uh, by way of Facebook. Uh, we salute you on your special day. This is a great day for the mothers. Amen. This is the day when a lot of men wish they were mothers. Amen. <laughs> Y'all get so much, so much celebration. You deserve it. Amen. I don't know anybody that's born that's closer to a child than a mother. Amen. Because a child comes from within you. It's just like the Holy Spirit is within us. And the child comes from within the mother. So the mother is aware of every heartbeat. Even before we can see the child, the mother can feel the child. That's how close mothers are to their children. There is a word from the Lord today, and we thank God for that word. I wish there were more here that could hear it and be blessed by it, because it's a word from the Lord. It's a challenging word on Mother's Day. And I pray that you will experience and feel the challenge of God's word on today, because indeed, it is a word of challenge to all mothers and fathers everywhere. We thank God for our worship leader, Elder Dr. Humphrey, the elders of this church. We thank God for you, the deacons, uh, godly women, the ushers, and we thank God for the people of God in this house, our first lady. Amen. I call your attention again. I invite you to look with me in the book of Matthew, the 20th chapter. Verses 17 through 23. I thank God for the choir. Amen. Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 17 through 23. And we'll find these words. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he might rise again. Amen. Amen. Is that right? No. no. On the third day, he shall. Amen. He shall rise again. Better watch me. <laughs> then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him. Somebody didn't get that. And desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? 
She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, God. Amen. When I read this text, my brothers and sisters, it made me tremble. It made me want to holler and throw up both my hands. See, don't take a church full to get happy. Amen. You don't even have to be in the church house to get happy. Amen. When you read God's word, Amen. you're not by yourself. Amen. Jeremiah said, when I tried to hold his word and keep from even speaking his word, his word was within me like a fire, shut up in my bones. Yes, and he had to speak it out just to get a little relief. Amen. And today, I, I want and I thank God for this word today. And I want to talk about a mother's love. A mother's love. That's power by itself. We could go a long way on that, but we're not going to try to, but a mother's love. I look at that young lady embracing that baby back there, a mother's love. Look how she rocking that baby. See there? Baby not saying a word, just in mother's arms, a mother's love. Yes. That's what I want to talk about today. Matthew highlights that Jesus had prepared his disciples for the third and final time by informing them that he was going to die. He was going to be crucified and that he shall be resurrected on the third day. The prophetic words of Jesus was no less troubling and difficult for his disciples to hear the third time than it had been for them to hear on the first and the second time. It was hard for them to believe the Lord's report. Jesus would have to say to them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Somebody probably said, I don't even believe he's going to heaven. I believe he's just a natural man. See, sometimes even among God's people, we do some talk, don't we? Yes. So Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. You see, heaven wasn't ready for them. We miss that sometimes. We just couldn't get to heaven without Jesus. No way. We weren't ready for heaven. Because you know, there was not a taint of sin in heaven. There was no sinner in heaven. So Jesus had to tell them, I go to get heaven ready for you. That where I am, there you may be also. Yes. And he said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. You see, there could be no reception in heaven until Jesus got there in front to be the receptor. 
Amen. He had to be the one because he said, no one will go to the Father but by me. Can't get to him without coming through me. Yes. And this, I, I, I'm sure that uh, the disciples, they were grief-stricken. They were stern in their hearts. They, were, they had a feeling of abandonment and unbelief. And it was difficult for them to imagine that Jesus was talking about going to Jerusalem, being scourged. I mean, he had been whipped for 40 lashes, doctor. Amen. 40 lashes. Yes. And after experiencing being horrifically beaten of the 40 lashes, then he would be crucified. Then he would die. And after that, he's telling them, listen now, I'll be back after three days. Now, for them, it was hard for them to believe. Yes, it was hard. So Jesus had to take time to console their hearts. But then, here comes this mother. Y'all gonna get this on Mother's Day. <laughs> this mother comes and joins Jesus and his disciples. She's already among them. She's already in that class. She joins them along with her twin sons. This is amazing. The Bible tells us then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children. Her name really is Salome. Salome. It's perfect time. Jesus already had enough on him. And he had to stop thinking about his own grief. Sometimes you have to stop thinking about your own self. And what you're going through because other people are more important than you are at that time. So you got to get your mind off of yourself and your troubles because somebody else has more troubles and you have been uh, picked out to be picked on to help them process their troubles. So Jesus had to stop thinking about dying because he already said the cup is a bitter cup. And if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He had prayed that prayer in agony. So after he, he had to deal with accepting the will of God, he still had to stop and comfort men that he had chosen. And they didn't get it. But here comes his mother who gets it. She got it. She believed him. She believed his word. She believed he was going to die. She believed he was going to be crucified. She believed that he was going to be horrifically beaten in Jerusalem. She believed all, and then she believed that on the third day he's going to rise again. He's on his way to his kingdom. Mrs. Zebedee, the Bible said, with her two sons. Then in the nick of time, she came worshiping him. Uh -huh. Somebody can wake up in <laughs> She came worshiping him. She wasn't restricted because she believed it. She wasn't uh, going through her personal crisis because she believed him. She brought her sons, the twins, James and John. They were better known, BKA, the sons of thunder because of their temperament. Jesus, she put her sons in the hands of Jesus. And the reason why our children sometimes don't fare out any better Sometimes somebody's children do, some don't. It's because we don't put them in the hands of Jesus. It's all right to send them to Harvard. It's all right to send them to Hampton. But you ought to tell them so. 
talking about them. All right, sir. We, we, we groom them to succeed down here. All right. And we wait till they are pressing a dying pillow to tell them anything about him. We want them to succeed on these earthly shows. We want them to have fame and fortune down here. But Mrs. Zebedee, she understood something otherwise. She taught her children, lay up for yourself not treasures here on earth. She was like a tiger mom. She drilled those kids. She drilled them to succeed. But she didn't measure success like we measure success. We pour down here for people to succeed. That's why the church is empty. That's why empty. It's not just empty because of a pandemic. It's convenient for it to be empty. It's not completely empty. I'm not talking about you all. I'm not talking about you. God always got a faithful remnant. He got a faithful remnant. You're part of that remnant. But there are those. The Bible said without faith, it is impossible to please him. And it is about pleasing him, you see. Sometimes I want to please me, but it's about pleasing him. Sometimes I get caught up in pleasing me, but it's about pleasing him. All right, sir. I can't get to heaven pleasing me. I can get somewhere else trying to please me. But we've got to please him. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. For those that believe him, you must believe that he is and that he is a, a reward of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Amen. So she believed him. She believed him. She groomed her children to succeed. Not on earth to show us necessarily. She put her hand, her children in Jesus' head, and he changed their mindset. Now, the Lord is working with us even while we're walking with. They were walking with Jesus when she first turned into their hands. One time they were walking to this village. They were coming to this village, Mother Great. And now uh, there's two Mother Greats over there. Mother Drake, some of Mother Drake's. They were coming to this village. James and John, the people were worshiping a little bit different than they worshiped. And they said to Jesus, must we call fire down from heaven and consume them? And Jesus told James and John, the the boys, y'all know my spiritual love. If they're not against me, then they flop me. It's not the methodology of how they worship. Amen. Don't you get all uptight and won't folks get killed because they don't worship the same way you worship. It's all right. Don't sweat that. As long as I'm being praised. And so he had to calm James and John down. But he made believers out of them. And they started hanging with him. They stayed with him. They stuck with him. And their mother made sure that, I'm going to make sure y'all hang with Jesus. Then, then, then let's move on. We've got to move because I ain't got much time. Yes. They were worshiping him and, 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 and desiring a certain thing of him. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't want you to miss this. Uh, yes. Uh, his disciples were stricken. They dismayed uh, 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 to the point of disbelief, and Jesus had to console them. I've already told you that. Peter had to remind Jesus, we have left everything and everybody to follow you. We, we, you talk about being humiliated, scourged, crucified, dead, and, and then we'll see you in three days. You're talking out of your head, and Peter asked Jesus, what's in it for us? We've done everything. What's in it for us? The Bible tells us then came to him the mother of seventy children with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And ain't that just like a woman to keep her focus? <laughs> what lesson can we learn? Uh, this mother's name from Mother Zebedee. 
And the first thing we learn from her is there is nothing more important in life for a mother than to know Jesus Christ. The second thing is for her to introduce her children to Jesus Christ. We need to take notice of Mrs. Zebedee's number one devotion, her relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that she came to Jesus bringing her sons with her. She came to Jesus bringing her children with her. She came to Jesus bringing her children with her. In the Bible, allude to a word in the Greek called proskuneo, proskuneo, which literally means someone who kneels, bows, or lies prostrate. It also means an act of worship, a posture or attitude of worship. Mother Zebedee understands that Jesus is more than merely the carpenter's son. She understands that he's more than the one who proclaimed foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but I, the son of man, have nowhere to lay my head. She was insightful. She had faith in Jesus Christ. She demonstrated her devotion to Jesus Christ. She was with Jesus right up to the end and after the resurrection in her devotion to Jesus, in her devotion. Mother Zebedee, uh, no doubt, taught, inspired, and encouraged her sons to reverence the Lord as the promised Messiah sent by God. She made it her business to instill into the hearts and minds of her children a greater goal, a greater desire. Sometimes folks say, you're so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. And that's right. Sometimes we're so earthly minded that we're no heavenly good. She had a desire. She wanted them to have a desire for eternal life. She encouraged her children by her example. Let us praise God together on our knees. She no doubt taught her children, her sons, God is the spirit, and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Mother Zebedee's goal for her children exceeded the temporal earthly ambitions. She motivated her children. All oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Mother Zebedee wanted to make sure that her children's most effective and fervent degree would be a B.A. She is still in them. You must be, James, born again. John, you must be. How often have we told our children that? We wonder sometimes why our sons and our daughters go like they have gone, do like they have done, do like they are doing. It's because we have not told them. We say, I showed them, I now tell them. What did you show them? What did I show them? Mrs. Ebony was different. She told them, you've got to have a BA. You must be born again. She came to Jesus with her sons, worshiping him. While all the disciples were grief stricken, she was worshiping him. The opening prayer that one of the power of prayer. And we have to be reminded that we ought to be praising God. We ought to be praising God just by being in here. We don't have to have a trial to praise God. The word of God is a bit of joyful noise unto the Lord. God is already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already all you got to do is open up your heart. He's already here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord children is good. She wanted to make sure that her children's most effective and fervent degree 
was the beginning. Secondly, Mother Zebedee came, the Bible said, desire a certain thing of him. Matthew 20, yes, 20 be close. In 21, Jesus said unto her, he asked, what do you want? I told you earlier that Mother Zebedee could teach us something. She didn't come to ask Jesus for a special secure career for her children. She did not come to ask Jesus for fame or fortune or that they would become the chief executive officers of some Fortune 500 company. She didn't come desiring anything on earth for them. Her request was out of this world. Her request initially might seem a bit selfish. But a mother's love for her children is no doubt sacrificial, but quite selfless. Mother Zebedee's heart's desire for her children was not that Jesus would, would, would save a seat for me. You know, we heard that gospel song, save a seat for me. Save a seat for me. We talk like Jesus and did. He already said, I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house are many mansions. Do you think the man the, the mansions are in heaven not gonna have enough seats? They were talking naive and didn't realize it. She was talking naive at that point, but she didn't realize it. But Jesus didn't rebuke her. Because she didn't ask him to save a seat. She was already there. She heard Jesus when he said to Peter, asking Peter's question, what's in it for us? And Jesus said, when I get to be in my glory, in the throne of my glory, not on the throne of my glory, but in the throne of my glory, you also will be there. There will be 12 seats and you will be sitting on the 12 thrones and you will be the judge of the I've shown you, 
I've taken you. You worship God with me. I told you, told you that you got to worship him in spirit and in truth. I don't care what nobody else say. I don't care what they think. This is what we do. When we come before him, we're going to worship him. Don't you, don't you miss, you listen to what he said. He told you already. He's got to go through some things. He's got to suffer some things. He, he served us. He served others. But he's got to keep doing this. He's making preparations for us. But he's coming back. But right now, i got to catch him before we get to camp. Like, and somebody need to ask so I, I need him to do something for us. I want him to assure us of something. And I want y'all to be with me so y'all can hear what he has to say. Wouldn't it be grand if we could if we could recapture every mistake we made with our children? Wouldn't it be grand? I know it'd be grand for me. That that time, you see, some of us were young coming along and we didn't know everything to do. We didn't know the right thing. We had to just figure it out as we went. Made mistakes, said the wrong thing, did the wrong thing with our children. But we ought to make sure no matter what, that our children see Jesus in us and see our design and you tell them about Jesus. They need to hear you say something about Jesus. Not just in this building, but in our homes, in our lives. They need to see us every now and then take off this book. If you don't read no more than Jesus wept. If you don't read no more than yes, Jesus loves me. This I know the Bible tells me so. You ought to be able to tell them something about Jesus. This woman didn't make no mistake about it. She had her children's heart. They knew mama. Mama loved us from Jesus. She knows us from Jesus. She's introduced us to Jesus. We were radical. But Jesus said you can't get to heaven being radical. You can get to heaven being transformed. And before you transform, you've got to be converted. What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean you got to be converted before you get transformed? The transform. I got some people here that explain this better than I can. And they can tell you something about it. Amen. But you know, I can use a utility term. If you go to the house of utilities, and you want the utilities in your name, you get it converted. You still ain't got nothing. You, you got something, but you ain't got what you want. You go home, it's in your name. You pay you. Pay, you pay that money that you're supposed to pay. And then you get a transformation. How do you know it? You hit the switch. And the lights come on. That's power. And that's what Jesus will give you. Once you convert it, then he wants you transformed. And Paul tells you how to get transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what our children got to see. That's what, that's what Mrs. Zebedee's children, Mother Zebedee's children saw that with her. Mama loved us from Jesus. And Jesus loved, loved him some mama. And he loved the children too. And she didn't make, she didn't say, I, 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 y'all can go straight to hell. No, she wasn't going to send her children to hell. It wasn't made for them. Jesus had already told her, and she heard him say, I go to prepare a place for you. But she, she kept their minds on heaven. I want all these people out sure minds on heaven. I have some sons, they have some mental issues to them. One thing I tell you, any day of the week, my middle son will call me and will ask me something about Jesus. Not only me, if he talks to you, he will ask you something about Jesus. And that's Joel. 
Mark and Joe were friends since they were in elementary school. And Mark still talks about Jesus. It's not a morning that he don't bless me. I said, I mean, you feel good, but like, sometimes when you feel like you messed up with the children, you don't know. But when you got one of the calls, you bless you every day of your life. Every day that Lord sent the sign, that's how you call me. Bruce called him a wake up call. It's not 7 o'clock. He called me every morning at 6 30. And he dared you up because I may as well God bless you, Dad. Everything. Do you know that made me feel good? I would say, I would talk about everything. But when my child tell me, God bless you, Dad. Everything of my life, my own, my son. God bless you, Dad. I love you, Dad. I'm not talking about somebody 15 or 16 or uh, 11 or 12, eh? When you have a, an adult son that tells you, adult son that tell you, I love you. Shh. Mother came by that. And then, when you know that they love Jesus, and each one of them, I have three, they love the Lord. They got their issues, but they love the Lord. No matter what, frame or not, they tell you about the Lord. Well, oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me move on. Got about five more minutes. It's almost 11 o'clock. Mother Zebedee's heart's desire for her son was grant that these my two sons may sit one on thy right hand. She ain't said nothing about the earth. She ain't said nothing about no big job. She ain't said nothing about look out for. She ain't said nothing about I want them to have fortune and fame down here. I want them to have a high name for everybody to recognize. She ain't said nothing about that. I want my sons to be in heaven. I want them to be so close to you. See, really what about the seats, really, is about the close connection. I want one of them, they're twins, they've always been together, they always hung out together. I want one on the right and one on the left in your kingdom. And she didn't say to Jesus, because see, at that time, he had not died. Listen, he had not died. That shows she believed that he was going to his kingdom. I want you to grant that, that they'll be at your kingdom with you. One on your left, one on your right. Mother Zebedee had no doubt about her sons making it into the kingdom. I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. They're going to be there. Mother Zebedee wanted her sons to abide close to Jesus. She wanted them to abide close in heaven as they would be inclined to abide on earth. Mother Zebedee exhibiting a mother's love but her, by her desired request, Jesus didn't rebuke the mother. He knew her desire was motivated by a mother's love. Jesus had to put Mother Zebedee in touch with the spiritual discovery channel. Matthew 20 and 22, he answered and said, You know not what you ask for, Mother. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. They said unto him, We are able. And he said unto them, Yes, you shall drink indeed of my cup. And you'll be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. James, you will serve and you're going to suffer. And we all know, brothers and sisters, according to Acts 12, verses 1 and 2. That, yeah, yeah, James suffered. And he was killed, yeah, by Herod the king. Yeah, we, we have read John's testimony. According to Revelation 1 and verse 9, John would die at an old age, banished to an isle, Elatomus is called Patch. 
Yes, hallelujah, he can see. And his words, his words reminisce in my mind. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, I was in the aisle that was called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, James and John, yes, they drunk of that cup. Yes, in Mother Zebedee, yes, word of discovery. Jesus said to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, mm -hmm. but it shall be given to them for whom that it is prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know who it was prepared for. It might have been Isaiah, the prophet. It might have been Ezekiel, the prophet. It might have been Amos. Yeah, it might have been Michael. I don't know who it was prepared for, but God, God had prepared for someone else. And Jesus said, God knows who's going to be on my left and who's going to be on my right. Mother Zebedee being a loving mother of insight, deserving, or faithful, and one whose life was devoted to Jesus. She submitted her desire to the Lord's will. In her discovery, she deemed it necessary to accept the only what God allows. Goodbye now and finally fare you well. Yes, yes. Great greatness in the kingdom sometimes means that you will have to suffer pain. You need to tell somebody that greatness in God's kingdom uh, means you have to go through sorrow. And greatness in God's kingdom come time, come sometime with a lot of service. Greatness in the kingdom uh, seen, see, is seen in the service of God. I recall the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. King said, and I quote, Anyone can be a great, be great, because everyone can serve in the quota. I, I, I believe in God's word. Let us all, let us all, brothers and sisters, recalibrate the heart of true Christianity. Let us on this Mother's Day receive Jesus in our hearts. As the Messiah, Savior, and the King of Kings. Yeah, if we're in the church, but we're not in Christ, let us repent and believe Jesus. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the glory. Give God the praise. Oh, come. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give our Father glory. Give our God the praise. Praise the Lord. If you're in the house by yourself, praise the Lord. If you don't hear no one say amen. Jesus down. 
extend you the invitation. Many of our children, they're going to be innocent before the Lord. But God will have a witness go to them. He's going to have some out there bear witness to them. But we fail to tell them about the love of God through Jesus Christ. God will have some out there that's going to go tell them. We're going to feel mighty bad because we didn't take the time to tell them how good the Lord is. We are out here trying to do everything that the world does. We're trying to keep up with the world. One foot in the church house and the other out of the world. We can't make our minds up what we want to do. And some of us are past 65, past 60, past 50. Still trying to keep up with the ways of the world. And Jesus said, The ways of sin is death. But Paul said, The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you're out there, you're listening. This invitation is to you. It's to you. Jesus died on the cross for you and me by our sins. We ought to praise him. Because the cup he drank for me was bitter. But he drank it anyway. He drank it anyway. And you know what? It's not as long as they have been. After a while, you want to worry about me on this side. Because I'm on my way home. Just a few more risings of the sun and a few more seconds of the same. And one of these days you were here. Did y'all hear about your dancing? But it'll be all right. So you say goodbye to your friends and your loved ones. You said every time you see them, there's no guarantee that you're going to wake up in the morning. But let them know that you love the Lord. We've done what the Lord required of us. We've done what he required of us. The Bible says the invitation has been extended. Seek to know Jesus and walk closer to him. Walk close to him. God bless your life. we're going to do something different today. We're going to ask you to sit and reflect as our musician gives us music. We want to just sit down while he does that and just reflect on the week coming ahead and ask God to just give you the strength to make it through the week. Talk to him not about yourself, but talk to him about something else, someone else. Get someone else in your mind because as the pastor said, sometimes we're not the most important thing, but it's other people. So have a seat while he plays and when he finishes, we are dismissed and we go. But just have a seat and reflect on Jesus Christ and others. Amen.
get to know the man. All right, sir. You said, she said you must be. Yeah. Jesus has brought me through.